There's a common misconception floating around the high seas that if you go on a cruise ship, well, you're just naturally going to gain weight. Well, I say poppycock. It's just not true. I just came off of a seven-day cruise, and guess what? I lost eight pounds. How did I do it? Well, let me share my secrets with you. I've got 10 doable tips for losing weight on a cruise. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, and today I'm going to take you on a journey, a journey on how to lose weight while you're on a cruise. And look, I know not everybody wants to worry about what they're eating while they're cruising. Uh, some folks would just rather worry about that when they get back home, but I know there's a, a good amount of you out there that would be like, all right, yeah, I wouldn't mind going cruising and not gaining weight. Well, this video is for you. Today's video is sponsored by Babbel. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple tips and then I'm going to tell you a little more about Babbel. Tip number one is to keep a food journal. What the heck does that mean? Keep a food journal. It's very simple. Everything that you eat, keep a record of it. There's a lot of ways that you could do it. You could do good old pen and paper. Just carry a little notebook around with you and write down everything that you eat. Uh, currently, I'm on the Weight Watchers program, and they have their own tracking app where I track the amount of points that each of my food items are, and I keep up with the daily point thing. But there's other great apps out there. The free app, My Fitness Pal. There's a lot of ways to track your food, but what we're talking about is being mindful on the very front end, being mindful of the things that you're eating, and uh, that way you can evaluate it on a daily basis or even you know in the moment to say okay I've eaten a lot today maybe it's time to uh, have something a little more healthy uh, the more mindful you are about the food that you're eating the better chance that you have uh, of not gaining weight on your cruise and as I mentioned earlier, today's episode is brought to you by Babbel. Babbel, the language application built on award-winning technology proven to get you speaking a new language in just three weeks. They do it with short lessons, 10-minute lessons, lessons developed by real language teachers. This isn't some AI or machine learning. And they teach you practical language, conversational language for travel and business and relationships. And look, I've dabbled with Babbel for quite a while, but it seems like every time I talk about Babbel, I change whatever language I wanna learn. I never do the three weeks worth of work. So I, I gotta do this. I'm gonna try Spanish for three weeks and see what I can learn. Let me just give you a quick example of the lessons. The, the first lesson here is on public transportation. And uh, it says, one of the easiest and cheapest ways to get around in a city is to, and under it, I can see where it says, let's take the bus. So I'm going to choose bus. And now it's going to say it for me. Vamos a camion. Vamos a camion. 2022 certainly feels like a time for renewal, a time to get into something new after all of the craziness we went through in 2020 and 2021. And uh, why not use language as a new way to open up a whole new world uh, for yourself? And of course, you know Babbel has a great offer for the Loca fam. If you want to start speaking a new language in just three weeks, click on the link down in the description and you will get 65% off your subscription price. Uh, thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring today's show. Doable tip for losing weight on a cruise number two is set a walking goal and track your steps. This one was a big one for me last week. I, I set a goal that I felt was attainable. That's the first thing. I decided I was going to walk 6,000 steps every day. And while it was attainable, it was a little bit of a stretch goal. It was certainly more than I normally walk. But I set that 6,000 step goal so that I had something to look forward to every day as something to achieve. Now, certainly on a cruise, there's going to be a lot of walking. And there was a couple days that I naturally walked 6,000 steps. But there was also a few days where I didn't. And so I had to be intentional about hitting that goal. I used my Apple Watch and the application on the iPhone to track my steps and that worked out pretty well for me. There's a lot of different options out there, Fitbit, Android, all of that stuff. Whatever it takes, get a cheap pedometer. And honestly, when I got home and I'd met that step goal every day, it was super satisfying. I felt really good about myself setting that goal and keeping that goal, meeting that goal. And the other cool thing about setting a step goal on the cruise ship is it, it makes you get creative. It makes you find new places on the cruise ship to get your steps in. Uh, cruise ships have a lot of different places that you can walk. 
Most cruise ships have a have a track that's normally exposed to the sun on the top deck of the cruise ship. Uh, but the, the cool thing about the cruise ship that I was on, the Norwegian Dawn, it also had a promenade deck. Deck seven went all the way around the cruise ship and it was covered. So I could walk on that deck without the sun beating down on me. Of course, they had a fitness center that had elliptical and treadmills. And then you could also get creative. There were a couple times where I didn't want to go outside. I just wanted to walk inside the cruise ship. And many of the uh, decks that have cabins on them, they also will go all the way around the cruise ship. And so I would just walk, you know, these long non-ending halls to get some steps in. And then one other kind of pro tip is that if you want to get a few extra steps in, take the long way to wherever you're going. Uh, I was staying around midship. Every night I would go to the show in the theater, which was at the forward part of the cruise ship. And I knew I could walk directly there. I could just leave my cabin, go to the left, go down to the forward part of the cruise ship, walk down a few flights of stairs, and I would be at the theater. But I'm like, how can I get some extra steps? Well, what I started doing is instead of going left to the forward section of the cruise ship, I would go right toward the, the aft section of the cruise ship, and I would take a long walk around uh, the deck that I was on uh, to get to the theater. So there's, there's ways to do it. You can game it a little bit so that it's not so monotonous, like, oh, you're trying to get your steps in. I was very excited and satisfied to hit my step goal. It's a real easy thing to do. Pick a goal for yourself, find a way to track it, and uh, get your steps in on a cruise ship. It's gonna help you lose weight. Tip number three, skip a meal. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it, it's probably more than just me. I think a lot of people eat four meals a day on a cruise ship. If you count that big snack you have in the afternoon or that late night pizza, I think if we're really honest with ourselves, I think many of us have uh, four meals a day. I'm not saying everybody does, but I think a lot of people that are worried about their weight may have four meals a day on the cruise ship. And so all I'm suggesting is skip one. Even if you're a three meal a day person, skip one. Maybe skip that breakfast or skip that lunch. It takes some discipline because you could end up a little hungry. You, you don't want to overeat at your next meal because you skipped a meal. But if you find a way to get into the routine of skipping a meal, uh, it could provide some opportunity uh, to not gain weight. I mean, you're reducing how much food you're intaking over the week by cutting out seven meals, for example. I, I, I challenge you with that. If you're a four meal a day person or even a three meal a day person, uh, try to skip a meal every day on your next cruise. Tip number four, plan out what you're going to eat before you are hungry, before you even go to the place to eat. Fortunately for all of us, many of the menus for the restaurants on cruise ships are available in advance. You can find out what food's gonna be in the main dining room. And so sometime when you're not overly hungry, take a look at the food that is there and go ahead and make some selections. Go ahead and make a note of the selections. Put it in your food journal. Go ahead and start thinking about those options. Go ahead and explore that when you're not hungry because when you're hungry, you're just gonna wanna go to that restaurant and you're gonna wanna eat and you're probably gonna be triggered from that hunger to get all the stuff to satisfy that hunger and usually that's not the best food. I did it for almost every meal last week. Before I went to the place where I was going to eat, I had a plan in mind what I was going to get and that helped me stay focused on good choices. Uh, one exception to that is the buffet. Uh, normally there's not a published menu for the buffet and so my trick for the buffet is when you go to the buffet, don't immediately pick up a plate. Walk around the whole buffet, scope it out, and make your food choices during that walk around, during that scouting expedition, and don't actually pick up a plate until you know what you're going to put on it. Because if you're walking around with a plate, everything that seems tempting or looks good, you're gonna wanna put it on the plate. But if you're walking around without a plate, uh, you, you don't have anywhere to put it. So uh, that's a tip for the buffet. But uh, yeah, pre-planning goes a long way. Again, we're talking about being mindful of what you eat. All these things uh, kind of harken back to mindfulness. Uh, if you think about what you're eating, when you're eating, uh, you're, you're more than likely not to overeat. And uh, so yeah, pre-plan your meals uh, and you'll end up with better choices. Tip number five. Don't eat all the food that they give you. So this one's a tough one. I grew up in a generation where cleaning your plate was of paramount importance. Uh, we, we heard about starving kids all over the world. And so if you have a plate of food in front of you, uh, you should eat it all. Now the challenge is I, I grew up in the 1970s and the portion sizes in the 1970s are, are smaller than they are 50 years later. And so one strategy that I use is I, I just only eat half of the dish. I'll cut the dish in half and I'll move half of it over to the I'm not gonna eat side and then I just focus on the I'm gonna eat side. It definitely takes a little willpower, it takes a little focus 
And for most of the meals that I had where I ate in a restaurant, I portioned my food out and I only ate half of the food that they set in front of me. I know there's some people out there like, well, isn't that wasteful? Aren't you wasting food? All of the cruise lines have a process in place for food waste. Uh, I've seen the process a couple times. A, lo a lot of times the food is mulched up and put into the sea and it becomes fish food. So yeah, don't shame yourself into eating the whole portion because you're worried about the food waste. Uh, the, the food waste will take care of itself. Uh, eat that half portion and uh, get your way to losing some weight on a cruise. Tip number six, and this one worked out well for me, when you are in those restaurants, ask for healthy substitutions. The example I have from last week is I sat down and I ordered a piece of beef, the New York Strip. It came with french fries and I said, hey, I really don't want french fries. Can you hook me up with some vegetables? And they're like, yeah, no problem. It was awesome. I got the nice piece of steak. I got the half plate of vegetables. It was all wonderful. Just know that it's okay to ask for things like substitutions at restaurants. Uh, uh, where they can, the crew members are going to go above and beyond uh, to get you exactly what you need. Now, before I get to tip number seven, let me take a quick moment to invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, if you like these cruise tips, if you like to hear stories about cruise ships, if you like staying up to date with the cruise news, well, we're your one-stop shop for that. La Lita Loca, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these shows. A big thank you in advance. Tip number seven, and this one's important, have some water in your cabin. Uh, go ahead and pre-purchase some water if you don't have the ability to get it as part of a drink package or something. That was the scenario that I was in. Uh, I did not pre-purchase any water. Uh, my drink package that I had on the cruise last week did not include water. And so early on in the cruise, I just went and purchased uh, some containers of water to keep in the refrigerator in the room. And this is a trick that many folks know. One way to curb some of your hunger pains is to drink water. It's good to drink water anyways to be hydrated. You should be drinking a lot of water. But one way to uh, alleviate some hunger pains is to chug some water. And it's even good to drink water before you eat. Uh, you start to feel full after you've had water, like 15 or 20 minutes before you eat. You start to feel full and you potentially would eat less. And so uh, be prepared for that by having some water in your cabin. Tip number eight also deals with having stuff in your cabin. I like to have some healthy snacks in the cabin. Uh, for me, on my Weight Watchers program, I can eat raw vegetables and I can eat fruit and it doesn't count against my daily points total. And so really it's, you know, you don't want to overeat those things, but you can eat vegetables, you can eat fruit in moderation. And so what I did on my cruise last week is I would go up to the buffet, I would pick up some bananas, I would pick up some apples, I would pick up some fruit that I could keep in my cabin, keep it in the refrigerator, keep it covered, and I would take some vegetables back. And then that way, when I started feeling the temptation for pizza or just some hunger in general, I could reach for a snack. I could have a healthy snack. I could have an apple. I could have some vegetables. And it really helped alleviate the temptation to go seek out something uh, less healthy than those things. So have some healthy snacks in your cabin. It will certainly help you uh, make some better food choices on your cruise. Cruise tip number nine is take the stairs. We talked about it earlier, the importance of getting some exercise to having a step goal and plenty of places to get steps on the cruise ship. Take the stairs when you can. Now, certainly people with mobility issues, people that have trouble taking the stairs, that's not what I'm suggesting. But if you could take a flight of stairs up or take a few flights of stairs down uh, instead of waiting on the elevator, uh, there's a couple benefits. Obviously, you're going to get that exercise in. You're probably going to get to the place that you want to go quicker. And uh, it's a nice way to get a little bit of extra calorie burn going so that uh, some of the food choices that you have won't hurt you as much but yeah tip number nine take the stairs and my number 10 doable tip for losing weight on a cruise uh, this one's interesting save the thing that you're tempted by the most until the last night make it like a reward for meeting your steps or for journaling all of your food for me on this last cruise it was the chicken wings at a restaurant called Oceans. I'd had them on a previous cruise. They were awesome. And I, I wanted to have those chicken wings again on this cruise. And I knew that if I had them early on in the cruise, if I had them on day one or, you know, early on in the cruise, I'd be thinking about those chicken wings. I just know my personality. I would be tempted by those chicken wings. I like putting the tempting items at the end. Again, it was a way that I rewarded myself. I had so much enjoyed uh, having that food that I really liked on my last day. And uh, I wasn't tempted to throughout the rest of the cruise because, well, the cruise was over. Save your temptations until the end and uh, give it to yourself as a little bit of a reward. So much of this is uh, psychology, right? It's easy to say, well, you should just avoid the tempting food altogether, but it's not the way that I'm wired. Like, you know, I, I'm happy to give myself a little reward for doing well throughout the week. And, uh, you know, they, they say don't reward yourself with food, but 
uh, sometimes food is the best reward. So, you know, we're all a work in process. And uh, maybe my next cruise, food won't be a reward. But on this one, it was fun to have the chicken wings on the last night. Uh, push that temptation back so you're not tempted the whole cruise. Let me say it again. Just because you're going on a cruise does not mean that you have to gain weight. These are 10 doable tips that you can use to lose weight on a cruise. And uh, I did it. I lost eight pounds last week. So if I can do it, you certainly can do it. And I'm sure there's other great tips out there on how to lose weight on a cruise. Uh, please feel free to share your favorite cruise tip in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. You can show your support by hitting the like button. A big thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's episode. This is Tony for La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.